So welcome to our fourth and final visual media strategy forum. We thank you for your flexibility. We were as disappointed as many of you to not be able to travel to Thailand uh, as part of both the MDC and our visual media strategy forum. One of the good news items is, is we have more than twice the number of people who registered for our online event than were able to register for our in-person event. Uh, my name's Clyde Tabor. I'm with the Visual Story Network and with Mission Media University. And then along with um, Jim Green from the Jesus Film and Carol and Calvin Conkey from Create International, we comprise the Visual Media Strategy Forum leadership team. So why have this event? Why gather? First reason is to celebrate the completion of the 2020 vision. We'll explain what we mean by that. We also want to showcase completed 2020 vision projects, and we want to promote strategic initiatives such as media to movements that are impacting the unreached. And we want to develop partnerships to produce visual media for unreached peoples. And we want to increase innovative distribution for current indigenous gospel media tools. So who is this for? And I think this is kind of who we have in our crowd. Uh, we have individuals or ministries who've adopted a 2020 vision people group. Uh, and Tom, if you're able, there you go. Uh, we have media influence with a commitment to see the 2020 vision completed. Content creators willing to start or join an existing partnership. Field personnel who consist with helping us with engaging media or the least reached with the media tools that are available. Anybody with a heart for media admissions for unreached people and people interested in using media to foster disciple-making movements. So that's kind of who we're targeting in this session. And let's just go through and look at the session flow. We're gonna hear an overview of the 2020 vision. We're gonna hear a challenge from Jim Green on how do, we, how do we think as we approach this 2020 finish line. We're gonna honor our participating filmmakers. It's stunning how many have participated over the last 10 years. We're gonna look at the next decade, what's next? We're gonna hear some amazing and encouraging case studies. And we're gonna talk a bit about engagement and distribution. And then we're gonna have a segment for breakouts by your particular area of interest. So with that being said, we're gonna actually hear now a little short presentation or slide that gives a little bit of a visual tour through the 2020 vision. that people will see and hear the gospel message. We're never going to see grassroots movement of God's spirit unless they're both biblically accurate and culturally authentic. But we were learning from the people themselves. They're the ones who have the key, the cultural advisors. These are the eight key things that must be in place for any kind of a collaborative endeavor to be successful.
It is great to see younger version of our of younger versions of ourselves. This is our fourth VMSF, which and because we do these every year means the first one goes back to 2014. Well, I started working with the Conkeys and the 2020 Vision at the end of the Call to All event in Los Angeles in 2011, but the initial idea was birthed a year earlier at an event that David Bogosian organized. We have David here to tell us uh, about that event. David is the director of Christian Aid and a 2020 Vision partner. So David, tell us about that Tokyo gathering. Yeah, so I'm super excited to be here 10 years later to be celebrating what God did. Tokyo 2010 was one of the three major international gatherings held in 2010 to celebrate the centennial of Edinburgh 1910. If you know a little bit about that conference, it was a conference that was designed for world evangelization in, in one generation. And so here we were 100 years later looking back, but also looking forward. And we had different task forces, one of which was a media task force, and the Conkeys were asked to lead that. And each task force was asked to prayerfully look and see what was the most strategic goal that could be set for the next 10 years. And so from out of that process came this amazing vision that we're now celebrating today, 10 years later. And I understand the completion of the goal. And so I'm uh, super excited just to be here and say, hey, you know what? I made it it's 10 years later. And uh, we're here and God did something incredible through this gathering. So praise God. I'm really excited to hear what we're going to hear. And I think the fruit from this is going to be absolutely incredible. In 10 years going forward, I imagine there's going to be something, a project in every unreached people group. So that's what I'm praying for and envisioning. And so let's go. Let's do it, guys. <laughs> that's awesome. And I, I love that historic reference. Thank you, David, to the, the 1910 conference. Well, now we'll hear from the people that God first spoke to uh, at that gathering uh, in Tokyo. I first met Carol and Calvin in the early 2000s. Uh, I don't know if you can go to the next slide, Tom. When I was overseeing new media at the Jesus Film, that's Cal all the way over on the left and Clyde all the way over on the right. Talk about much younger versions of ourselves with Paul Eshelman, who was the founder of the Jesus Film in the middle. And probably Jim Green was in the, in the room, but just off camera. Uh, Carol and Calvin are groundbreaking. And you can go to the next slide pioneers in the area of indigenous and evangelistic films. When given uh, the vision you're about to hear, they had already had decades of experience in creating films for least reached people. They founded Create International, and today Create has more than 70 staff in seven countries. One of my great privileges is to be a friend and a partner with Carol and Calvin and the extraordinary Create team. Let's hear from, from them. Thank you so much, Clyde. It's a joy to be here with you, and we welcome you to our 2020 Visual Media Strategy Forum online. Yay. And we have many <laughs> participants, double the amount that had signed up, and this is going to be recorded, so we're encouraged. And so we just want to share a little bit about the 2020 vision. The real heart behind it is with and for and, and by, by the, the people. people. Okay. So next slide. It's what that means is indigenous films. That's what we were really looking for. Not just films that Westerners come in and do, but actually films that we do together in a partnership with the people from that people group. And so as we got together and sought the Lord with our partners, we came up with this mission statement and goal to produce and distribute an indigenous evangelistic audiovisual tool for every one of the least evangelized mega peoples, uh, so by the year 2000, so that all can clearly see and understand the gospel message and embrace it as their own. So that's a real mouthful, but it's full of really important insights. Okay, next slide. Uh, this, we're going to show a little video that explains the 2020 vision and what the, the implications of it and the milestone that it is for world missions. In this century, we are presented with incredible opportunities unknown to previous generations. How will we utilize new art forms, media, and technology to advance the cause of reaching the last unreached people? The vast majority of unreached people are oral learners. Imagine compelling evangelistic movies, art, and animation being made for specific unreached people. Gospel media in their heart languages 
with their own people using stories they can relate to. Indigenous audiovisual gospel presentations are media that combines visual and audio arts with a culturally relevant presentation of the good news in a heart language and style that is relevant to a people. The least evangelized mega people groups amount to 75% of all unreached people. It's been 2,000 years. We've gone from preach, where we've added the ability to print, and now we live in the age of portray. So we are part of the generation who was able to communicate Christ and His kingdom in a way that is captivating, it's engaging, it's visual. The least reached peoples, the most isolated peoples increasingly are having some access to media. And so it's our opportunity to take media to them, creating content with and for and by the people that we will be reaching. We've seen indigenous media created, and we just need others who can join in and help us finish this very significant task. The goal of the 2020 vision is to see indigenous audiovisual gospel presentations produced for the largest and least reached people groups by the year 2020. This is our opportunity as an arts and media community of believers to have a tremendous impact on the unreached peoples of the world. For the 2020 vision to be fully realized, partnerships of skilled individuals, churches, and mission agencies are needed to form teams. Why not give some of your time and use your skills and resources to help meet the tremendous needs of unreached people so that all may clearly see, understand, and embrace the gospel as their own? Together with God, let's create new communication tools that will bring salvation and transformation to all peoples. When we first looked at this um, endeavor, we thought, oh man, this is a huge mountain. How can we ever finish this? And I just love this testimony, this quote from Hudson Taylor, the great missionary to China. There are three stages to every great work of God. First, it is impossible. Then it is difficult. Then it is done. And I, I'd say that encapsulates the whole last 10 years in this 2020 vision. It was an amazing, uh, amazing experience and connection with, uh, with the whole body of Christ uh, taking uh, a hold of this and taking uh, ownership of this vision. Next slide. And one of the first things that we were asked to do was to create a website that could distribute all the films that our partners together uh, would make. And so we started in digitube.tv, and that's a place where you can view and download all the films for free. Now there's over 825 gospel films, audio Bible in 1,300 languages. Uh, 295 of those films are animated films, and 530 are dramatic films all downloadable for free. So uh, next slide. Then we were also asked to produce a website so that we had the resources needed for all of our 2020 partners to cast the vision to their churches and their partners. Next slide. Uh, and also, we, the Lord led us to start to gather together because, you know, I think all of us realize that gathering together, we connect, something happens in the, in the human spirit and soul when we connect together and we hear one another's heart. And uh, so this is, God used this as an amazing space to be able to connect and partner uh, together, network together. Next slide. And so we connected with many people, uh, media missionaries from around the world. We ended up having partners from 58 different mission agencies come on board. And most of those did uh, gospel films as a part of this campaign. Next slide. Uh, and now uh, you can just connect, go all the way through the, uh, yeah, there you go, perfect. So now all of these in this list, all these people groups, 150 of them are completed. And the next slide, and then we only have 11 that are left to be done by the end of the year, and we're on track to be able to do that. So we have the folding hands here because we ask for all of you to be praying for us that we'll reach this goal with the coronavirus and all kinds of other challenges, we really need to see God continue to do great miracles, which he's always done, to see this completed by the end of the year, which we know we will. Last slide. 
Uh, and this is just some of the, uh, the database-driven partner um, ministries who are helping us to distribute all of these resources that our partners have put together. And so every one of them have made a space for the films that uh, the 2020 Vision campaign has produced. And uh, from this, now uh, more than 2 billion people, 2 billion unreached people have a, an indigenous gospel uh, presentation for them in their heart language. And we always love to have film showings, and we usually have whole nights of showing the films, uh, the trailers, film producers love that. But we have one that we can show now that Finu is gonna share with us, and it's his latest production. He and his wife are, are one of our wonderful producers in India, and so is gonna share about the Kanauji. Excuse me, may I help you? Help? I'm Moe. I'm Mehik. <laughs> nice name. Greetings to all of you and nice. it's a wonderful uh, time that we all together and this is the first ever VFMS uh, online uh, yeah. that we all together and we can see each other and we can see the progress of the Create International. And uh, I'm so glad this trailer you are watching here this is one of the most ambitious uh, project I have ever done with Create International. This was my fifth project that I'm doing with them. And uh, let me tell you about this people group. This is the Kanoji people group. They belong from the Brahmin caste of India. They are the most uh, influential people in India, culturally, socially, politically. And uh, more than that, uh, they are the one who take care of the religion, religious activities of India and most of the community uh, over in India. And secondly, we could make this movie in the mother tongue of their own language that is called Hindi. And secondly, that is the national language of Hindi. So the uh, uh, national language of India. The best part is like once this movie is going to be released, we are going to, uh, we are going to, uh, we'll be able to reach out more than 70 to 80 percent population of India. So you can just simply imagine how Create International is making a international impact when they are making and coming out with a, a cross-cultural evangelical movie uh, and uh, more than that with a contextual way. So this movie is very uh, special for me. Uh, I, I was able to write the script by the grace of God and this story is about uh, shame and honor culture of India uh, whereas uh, uh, a girl is struggling with her own life uh, where she come across with some, some kind of accident and she has to come out from the shame. Uh, and she's struggling with her family. It's a totally family movie, I can say. Mm -hmm. And we kept the name is Second Touch. One is like, one, once you have gone through the shame, but you need a second touch. Uh, that is from the Jesus. And once he touched, he changes the life. So we definitely believe. And uh, uh, I am, I am, I'm so grateful for the Great International, and especially the team, uh, my close friend and uh, <laughs> brother Steve. Uh, his team is very helpful for us, always comes. Uh, I have made almost four films with him. And secondly, uh, this year uh, I could uh, work with Brother Ben, is one of uh, the Create International, part of uh, Create International team. Uh, they have come from all the way from uh, Australia and we could make the movie. Mm -hmm. So my role is as a, uh, a, a co-producer for Create International and uh, working along with them, provide them facility in India and making a platform for them and more than that, uh, this kind of, <laughs> uh, I love to write a script and when it comes to on the screen, it's, it's privilege. And more than that, when we are doing it for Christ, yeah. uh, that is, uh, I cannot explain the joy of what I have in my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, more than that, we are touching the heart with their own language, their own story, mm -hmm. with their own culture. Mm -hmm. And more than that, we are introducing that Jesus is your. Yeah. And uh, they can say tomorrow after watching these movies mm -hmm. and this project that Jesus belongs to us. It's, yes. uh, uh, that is very uh, important for <laughs> for our part. Yeah. Once again, thank you, Great International. Yeah. God bless you all. Wow. Thank you, Binu. That was beautiful. What an inspiring story. Uh, Jim Green is the former executive director of the Jesus Film. He has been a key partner in the 2020 vision. He is a friend and mentor to the Conkeys, me, and many others involved in this 2020 movement. He will share a few thoughts from his heart as we approach the end of 
this 2020 vision challenge. Jim. Great. As a member of the Jesus Film Project for the last 23 years, I'm passionate about the power of visual stories and media for God's kingdom. And I love what God has been doing through the 2020 vision and the visual media strategy forum. I really thank God for the wonderful partnerships we're enjoying together uh, for God's kingdom and also for the incredible initiatives that Calvin and Carol Conkey and their team have taken for Clyde Tabor and the Visual Story Network team. What a joy to work together. One of the reasons I'm bullish on the 2020 vision is because I've seen the impact of culturally authentic messages and films in my own ministry experience. I'd like to just give you two examples. The Maasai of Kenya, uh, this is an example of a culturally based visual story presentation for oral learners that we produced actually some 40 years ago for the Maasai of East Africa. We worked with Fuller Seminary to do an ethnography, field research, and testing. This was in the 70s, even before there was internet, or laptops, or cell phones, or short films, or apps were available, nothing like that. But after 100 years of mission effort in Kenya, there were only a handful of Maasai warriors who were believers. They were very resistant to the gospel. But this culturally based presentation of the gospel was what God used to bring a chief of 200 Maasai warriors to Christ. He then invited us to show the Jesus film to his 200 warriors and 100 of them decided to follow Jesus. Today, this presentation can be shared by video, text, internet, or social media. Here, there are here two, two uh, next pictures uh, are first showing of the Maasai. You might notice Paul Eshelman there. He and I, with the team, were privileged to see a historic breakthrough take place among these traditionally resistant warriors. If you'd like to read the story, you can get it on Amazon and Paul's book called I Just Saw Jesus. These last two photos I want to show you were taken when we took 40 people back to Kenya a few years ago when we premiered the Walking with Jesus uh, follow-up film that we produced. And when the Maasai elders heard that we were there, they asked us to come and visit them. While there, they inducted my wife, Nan, and me and another older couple into their tribe as honorary elders in recognition of the impact of the Jesus film on their tribe. One of the elders, who was a believer and a general in the Kenyan army, told us that at that time, 42% of the Maasai had become believers since that initial showing of the Jesus film. The next slide, the second and more current example, is a culturally based film for Africa called Walking with Jesus. It presents in a culturally authentic way for sub-Saharan Africans how to know and walk with Jesus. We found that there were many cultural things in common between people groups all over Africa. When we produced it, we had cultural advisors on the set from all parts of Africa to ensure that we would connect culturally. And today, this five-segment film, now in 53 languages, is being used all over Africa and even beyond with very exciting results. It's shown as a follow-up after the Jesus film, or often even alone. Just an example, in Tanzania, they show the Jesus film, and then the next five nights, a segment of Walking with Jesus. The seventh night, they plant a church. They planted more than 700 churches and have seen 16 to 25 generations of multiplying churches planted. In Uganda this Christmas, more than 18 million people saw the Jesus film, Magdalena and Walking with Jesus on 34 TV stations. In one country, some 500 Muslim students in a school came to Christ using this film. And in, uh, this Christmas, after TV showings of the Jesus film, Walking with Jesus, the short films in Ghana and Ethiopia, 11,600 people used WhatsApps to connect workers and 4,300 people prayed to receive Christ and are being followed up through WhatsApp. I thought you'd like this last slide. Not only has Walking with Jesus been shown on TV, but even on the site of a white cow in rural Africa. You can view uh, this film on the Jesus Film Project app or jesusfilm.org. 
I believe that as media producers, we need to create content that's both biblically accurate and culturally authentic. Why is it so important? Well, first of all, it's the Word of God, as we know, which is live and powerful. It's in people's heart language. It's culturally appropriate and connects with people. It's visual. It's story. And these are what the Lord said to us in 1 Corinthians. Paul said, I've become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. As we approach the finish line, I would pray that each of us as content creators would continue to be used of God to create biblically accurate and culturally authentic visual stories for the remaining unreached peoples of the world. I'm always reminded of Galatians 6, 9, which says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. A friend, a, a friend of mine one time said, it's always too soon to quit. May God cause us to be faithful. In closing, I'd like to just pray for each of us as content for, uh, creators and workers for God's kingdom. Lord, thank you for what you've been doing. I praise you for the faithful ones that you've been using to come so far in this goal. And by faith, Lord, we see the completion of this. And I pray your anointing over each of the content creators and all of the workers for God's kingdom. We are your masterpiece, Lord. You've created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that you planned for us long ago. Thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. I hope you are as encouraged as I am. Uh, I'm, I'm loving this historical perspective. We are a part of the Spirit of God moving amongst the nations. And just like we had the Roman roads and the printing press, now we've got visual media and we get to be partakers in what God is doing through this unique time and this unique platform. Thank you, Jim, for sharing that. That was blessing. And thank you, Matt, for the comment. Holy cow. In response to the being showed on a white cow. I've never seen that. That was great. We're going to take a few minutes to honor the many people who have participated in one of our 2020 films. Uh, Carol and Calvin, take us away. Okay, yeah, this is where if we were together, we'd break out and worship for about a half an hour. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, so uh, we wanted to uh, also mention up here that uh, we've, we've got a certificate that we're going to be sending out electronic version of the certificate to every one of the 155 people involved in production of these films. Yay, yes, bless you all. And I put up here a, a version of Clyde's that he's gonna be getting. And uh, so next slide. Uh, what we wanted to do is we, we wanted to show all the people's names and organizations, but we, you know, we didn't, have the time to do, throw it all up there on 50 slides or whatever. So we're just going to have it running here and you might see your name up there, or your mission agency. And uh, we're just wanting to express our thanks. And first of all, to God for amazing faithfulness and how he provided uh, millions of dollars, I'm sure overall, you didn't probably get a million, but <laughs> everybody all together and everything that was needed to do this job. And um, so I also want, I'm just going to hold up this. This is actually Steve Baldwin's certificate that he's going to get. So everyone will be getting one of these and we'll be sending the, those out shortly uh, to everyone that you see this on this scrolling video. Did you Isn't it wonderful, the partnerships and the new friendships we made? Uh, we 155 individuals, 58 agencies. Wow, we couldn't do it ourselves as, no a, as a ministry of CREATE. We're like, oh, we looked at the task. How can we work together? And so this is, is we're so thankful for the new friendships, the hard work, the tenacity. You didn't give up when it was hard. When this language couldn't be recorded, you found a way. And so we That's really right. honor and thank you so much for, for your um, gift to the mission and gift to unreached people. Uh, if unreached people were right here among us, which some of which us some are, <laughs> yeah, they'd be saying, yay, thank you. Well done. Good and faithful servants. Yes. And you know, we couldn't have done this without prayer. One of the, the pictures that you see here is the group with a giant map of the world, you know, and we had picture, we had little names and population of all the different 2020 vision peoples. 
and we would go and stand on that and pray and have worship music going. And at the end, when we would uh, roll up the map, we had to literally take a towel to sop up all the puddles of prayers that people had cried and, and uh, gone onto that map. So it's just really exciting how the Lord used all of these things to impact us, not just impact the unreached, but impact us personally. Next, Next slide. slide. And so people like Binu and others were indigenous producers, and, and they're saying the two billion unreached people that now have an indigenous gospel film in their heart language. Mm -hmm. There's other media tools, but this is with and for and by the people. So we are excited about that. Next. Next. And Barry, who uh, he's, I think he's connected here. Uh, he is our cyber staff. You know, he's been with us for years, but he's in, did an incredible job with dubbing the Prophet story, which was an animated film done for Muslims. They were asked to take over and uh, he helped to edit 53 new languages for major Muslim languages. So we just want to honor him as well. Next slide. And our last VMSF was over Easter weekend, and we remembered the Lord's uh, death and resurrection. And that's, we were co-creating with God. And so I just felt God's spirit saying that he's with us, he's creating with us, and he's yeah. thankful for the sacrifice. And we do this on to you, Lord, for your glory and your honor. Amen. 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 Okay. And wow. Uh, you got me with the puddles of prayers, bro. <laughs> that was sweet. Um, John Rawls is the founder of Kavanaugh Media, a business's mission enterprise. He is the genius behind the Christian, Christian Media Marketing Podcast. You got to listen to it. I've listened to at least 15 of those sessions. He spent 10 years as a missionary in, uh, in Asia. And in my opinion, he is the world's best authority on creating marketing campaigns for finding seekers and least reached people. And yes, we're segmenting over to you, John. That's great. Um, he is a part of the Media to Movements Training Coalition, and he'll be explaining a new move of God's spirit that's been underway now for a couple of years where people and teams around the world are increasingly adopting a strategy to use social media to find seekers and persons of peace among least reached. John. I, uh, I just want to start off by saying I am so honored to be a part of this. And Cal and Carol, thank you for asking me to be just a, a little part of what you all have been doing in partnership with God for these years. It is such an honor to be around such creative people because you all reflect the character of God. The very one of the very first things we see about God is that He is a creator. I mean, as He has revealed Himself to us, He shows He is a creator. And you all, each one of you, in that long list of people that you just showed right there, are reflecting that creativity of God. And I just, I just love it. I was thinking last night as I was getting ready for this of the very first video. I actually started with video before I ever did the marketing stuff. I, I went to grad school at the University of Missouri, but I had an old iMac. If you remember the old ones that had like peach color and all of those ones, and it came with iMovie. And I started making movies and I fell in love with media. And I love what is happening with media around the world. And so I wanna share with you all with the time that I have today, just a little bit about that. Let me regroup here. Let me share with you then a little bit, now that we have the right slide, about this movement that has been happening with the desire of seeing a movement of multi-generational, local, indigenous, simple churches that are being shared and people are sharing with their family and their friends and they're reaching out to their whole oikos, their whole group and relationship network. And it is a funnel. And now a funnel is our attempts to describe what is happening naturally. We don't create a funnel and then try to force things into it. We're, we're looking at what's happening around the world and we're trying to describe 
well, what is that process of what's taking place? And so through this funnel, at the top of it, you're seeing that there is media and people that are seeking, religious seekers, and sometimes they're not seeking for Jesus, they're just seeking for some sort of answers, are going to social media. There's both a push and a pull. There's people searching, so that's Google, and then the number two search engine in the world, which is YouTube, which is where media is so powerful. And at those places, we're trying to pull people from those search engines to landing pages or websites, or Facebook pages or whatever else. But yet we're also pushing content out in front of people through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, you name it, it's, it's trying to put this content out in front of people to push it in front of them to begin to see, well, are they one of those seekers? And so the focus of an M to M is an end to end strategy. It is using media to find seekers, engaging them online with the goal, with the, the finish line, with the success being 2 Timothy 2.2. That in an offline, face-to-face -face discipleship and evangelism that they in turn can begin to share with others. And so as you see this funnel come down, in essence, when it moves offline, it begins to grow back out again as it, you see multiple generations as one person teaching another who exponentially then the kingdom of God can advance. And so media is that very first part of that funnel. It is through these Google ads and through Facebook and through these pages, through videos and pictures and all sorts of creative content that people can become exposed to the gospel for the very first time. We're seeing in certain places that we can get a reach that is quite large. Let me give you an example. In the former Yugoslavia area, a team there began to use a very simple video that a hook video and then a landing page video to put some gospel message out amongst the whole capital city. And through just very little ad spend, what ended up happening was to our best estimates, the reach, the amount of people who saw that was nearly two thirds of that city. And we spent just around a hundred US dollars to see two thirds of a city watch some form, at least 50% of a gospel message. If you can imagine, how long would that take in a non-video type of world to walk around and just talk to someone? Or to even if you just had a video to be able to show that to that many people. And so that's the power of social media is to get this out in a reach and in a way that is unbelievable. And in fact, I think we're in a time greatest only to the beginning of the church of the opportunities that we have to see the completion of the mission that God has given to us. And that is what the M to M, that whole coalition of people, is that honestly, we just want to see the completion, completion of God's mission. We want to see Jesus come back and we want to see it happen, Lord willing, in this generation. And so another example of that, of what I might share, is that of what is happening in the coronavirus right now. Just a few weeks ago, before in the United States, ground zero of the pandemic began in one of the most diverse areas of all the United States is in the Jackson Heights area of New York City. In the local hospital that's being overwhelmed now there, they have translators for over 150 different languages. And we ran Jesus Film videos clips about prayer and then asked people how could we pray for them in a very specific language targeting a very specific people group there and i'm of the belief that for many of them for most of them actually this was the very first chance they ever had to hear the gospel to have someone offer to pray for them and unfortunately for some of them it may have been the last time so we have to see and use every tool we have. So media to movement is that desire to move through a top to bottom end funnel from starting online and then moving offline to see groups. Keep going here with the slides, maybe. There we go. And so just to give you an idea of some of the places where this is happening, uh, Frank 
Preston, Dr. Frank Preston, just did a research project where many, many teams were sharing where they're using this complete end-to-end -end strategy. And you can see the darker the color, the more the focus is, the more activity that's taking place. Well, that is showing you, well, there's still places in the world where there's not much of this that's happening. And so there is much, much activity and work that is yet to still be done. So I want to share with you all a little bit of how I see the role of media in this media movements taking place because the reality is is that you are needed. We need media creators. God himself has given and revealed himself in scripture and so we want to to share that story of who he is with people. So let me go back. There we go. What we need in 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 this media to movement is we need great local content. One of the things that I hope for when I'm working with teams and trying to develop these campaigns is that I want someone to see some content and go, wait a minute, I know that place. I want people to realize that in their people groups, there are other people like them. That's why the power of the word we is so powerful, that they realize that they are not alone, that there are other people that are seeking to know who Jesus is in their heart language. And so we want to speak in their heart language. And with social media, subtitles are really important. I saw that in the chat. Someone mentioned that over 90% of the people are watching on a mobile phone with their sound turned off. I'll be honest, when I travel all around the world, sometimes I'm sitting on a bus or a train and I'm just kind of looking at other people's phones. And I've actually seen my ads at times. And it's just a joy to see people looking at this content in real time. I almost want to talk to them, but I wouldn't know the language to do it. But to see them almost always using those subtitles, they're looking at what they're watching there. And then they share it with other people. And that is that organic part that takes off. What is so powerful are stories. Nearly two thirds of scripture is God revealing himself through story and through narrative. And so that is this need of local heart language and teaching people as many of you have done how to use even their cell phone to take video and to show this. Now, there's different types. There's hook videos, there's landing page videos, there's long form videos that we use in this media to movement on the top part for me in social media. A hook video usually is a video that is less than a minute so that I can use it on Instagram. And it doesn't necessarily resolve. So it may talk about an issue, it may bring up some tension, but that doesn't mean that it resolves it. A landing page video then is a longer one. So if you look at a testimony, this is one we use a lot, where it is a testimony video, maybe audio uh, over B-roll footage, something local, where people can see that and they hear that, and then if they're seeking, they will click to watch more. Let me click out of this and try to show you some examples here and I'm just going to show you a couple but here is what a short hook video might look like and then that one that exact one would have gone to this page and we're using it with English subtitles a longer video and for the sake of time I'm, I'm not going to be able to go through all of that but that's just an example of using a short clip that then leads them to a landing page where there's a longer video and now we can retarget them we can retarget based upon how long they've watched a video or if they've downloaded a Bible or if they've sent a private message and we are seeing hundreds of people thousands of people who are being saved through this process and what is amazing to me so far is the, that though this is not a magic bullet in every country, and I am working in over 50 different countries with teams all around the world and with over 12 different mission organizations, we're seeing that there are seekers in every place, in every country, and among every people group, there are people seeking who, who want to know Jesus. So these themes come back to, and I want to spend the last couple minutes I have just talking about some of the themes that we are really hitting on. There are these pain points, but with like Facebook, you can't say the negative. You can't say these pain points like, are you feeling like committing suicide? That 
that video, that ad will not be accepted. And so we talk about the opposite, the positive to that, these spiritual longings. So forgiveness and love, acceptance, significance, security, all of these are themes that we create this content that is used to be a hook, just, just to try to catch their attention and then begin that conversation with them online. And if the Holy Spirit is calling seekers to salvation, then the question is, what are they seeking? And I think the answer is Holy Spirit fruit. And so our content wants to be filtered through this content of the Holy Spirit and what He is offering to all people. And so I would just challenge you all to understand that in this media to movement world, we need you. And my hope, my biggest desire more than anything else, the thing that I keep saying over and over and over with every opportunity that I have is that I pray that we can lose the labels, that we can lose these, these things that we use to divide ourselves and to put ourselves into these little camps. And we can just put our hands together to the plow and unite simply as Christians, that we can each use the gifts and talents that God has given to us in the unity of the Spirit to finish the task, to finish the job, to see that there are no unreached people groups and that everyone has access to the gospel, starting online possibly, moving offline, but it's that every place can see the body of Christ among their own people. And so thank you for those of you who are part of that. If you're wanting to be a part of it, we just want to, to welcome you to that. Reach out to Clyde, to myself, to Tom at MMU. You can go to kingdom.training, which is a website about this media movement. You can talk to me if you want, whatever. But we want to help you see you play a part in this movement that is happening. And we want to support you in any way we can as well. So thank you all for the time and for letting me share with you. I really appreciate it greatly. Well done. Thank you so much, uh, John. Uh, you're knowledgeable, but more important than your knowledge, you've got the heart of God for the nation. So thank you. Uh, we'll put some information in the executive summary that we'll be sending out um, later today that has um, some of the information that John just referenced, as well as all the other things that you'll be hearing about. And someone asked in the chat, uh, and we'll try to get as many of the videos that you've seen as well available. So just left FYI. So now we're going to hear from Tom Kazoyan as well as Carol and Calvin, but Tom's going to begin by talking about ways that the 2020 vision could connect with this new move of God's spirit of creating and accelerating media or movements through the uh, use of media. Tom is a dear friend, an avid filmmaker, a veteran missionary, a media to movements training instructor. Tom wears many hats, but Tom, let's talk about the role of stories. Thanks, thanks, Slide. Well, the um, I, I come at this um, f originally from a filmmaking background. That's sort of if you ask me what I did. That's I'm a, yeah, I'm a filmmaker, but I'm but I'm involved in all these other things as well. And I want to talk to the content creators. I think primarily right now, and this is a question that we have as we sort of enter into this sort of world of new media. We have to kind of ask the question, you know, who who are we? What is our role in all of this? Um, and you know, am I a film feature filmmaker? Am I a mobile person? Am I doing TikTok videos? You know, all these kinds of questions that we want to ask. Um, and so I have gone through this process over probably the last 10 years or so in my own life um, as, a, as a content storyteller. And uh, I have a couple of things that I want to I want to I want to reframe sort of how I've been thinking in terms of my own identity as a filmmaker. So maybe this is valuable to those of you who are in that similar place. One of the things is that I want to I want to make a bold statement uh, in this context. Stories are not the most important thing. Okay, and you know there's got to be a clarification, hopefully, with this. Here's what I mean by that. Coming as a storyteller, I'm a, I'm a screenwriter, I'm a storyteller, I love stories. But in this context, outside of art that I might want to create, I want my stories to be about engagement. I, we want stories that lead to engagement with people at a deeper level than just pure entertainment, right? That's the way I try to think about stories now. And stories have the ability to change imagination. That's really the, the thing that I want to grab on as a storyteller. If I'm thinking about encouraging someone to change their worldview, 
um, to change and so they make this radical, what we call a high level conversion from one identity to another, our stories are helping them understand what is possible for me, right? A person like this man here in, uh, I think, I believe this is Tibet, um, a Buddhist, you know, what is possible for me? This is who I am. I am who I am. To be me is to be this, right? What is the true story of God? So it's a worldview sort of, sort of shift that we're asking people to make. So the stories have that possibility of showing people, ah, this is possible. I can be this and be a follower of Jesus, for instance. So the phrase that I like to use is wrap stories in strategy. Um, I don't, stories are important, but what if I wrapped my stories into the strategy that the field workers, the people who are doing disciple making on the field are giving back to me and saying, oh, if we could talk about this, it would be amazing for our people. And so it's, it's not so much. And again, sometimes us creatives, we, we, we get this vision from God and we say, oh, I got to tell this story. It's not necessarily true in the new media age that if we just do a cool video that it will ever get seen by anybody, right? We know this, there are too many channels out there. So if we build it, they will not necessarily see it, even if it's good. Here's an approach that, that, that I suggest. What if we start with imagining what we call a persona? And so the persona really is that target audience kind of person that we're looking for. And it involves much more than just, it's a man in, you know, Bangladesh or something like that. It's not just this very generic thing, but it has their, involves their questions that they're asking. What kind of channels is that person using? Is that person on Facebook all the time or are they something else all the time? Or are they not, not connected to the internet at all? How would we reach them? Ways that we can engage where they are. How can we engage with them on their phone, on television, on, through radio? How can we engage people with that? And then we imagine our stories. So what if we did it in that sort of order and we included all these things. And I wanna give it a, for instance, this is an example of uh, some video, a video set that we did for Arab World Media. So one of the partner organizations um, that I've worked with for a number of years. And there's a, um, our video is, our, we, they approached us and said, we wanna reach a persona that is young people in Egypt. It's not just any young person in Egypt. What if we talk about students who are thinking about important issues. They're thinking about religious fundamentalism. They're thinking about gender issues, women who get harassed on the bus, those kinds of things. And yet in a religious conservative context, they all use Facebook and social media on the internet. Uh, we know that we can post targeted ads, right? And we can recruit people to interact online with people. Very, very important. We want to have that in place. What kind of visual story might we create to encourage conversation about spiritual matters? For instance, to read the Bible, to join with a group reading the scripture. And so we did a set of three videos. This is just an example of three short videos that we did. Um, we had ads running to get people to landing pages to watch the videos. There were online responders already with the themes they were talking about, knowing about the videos, and there was field follow-up involved in that as well. So there was already people connected. And these episodes bore a lot of fruit. The very first episode that we launched in January or February in 2018, um, the very first day it launched, people were coming to the Lord, including people were responding with people saying, you know what, I've been wanting to talk to somebody. I have a group of people meeting in my house secretly, and they are all, we all want to accept Jesus and follow him. Can we connect with somebody? So it's an example of the kind of fruit that we want that serves the ministry goal. It means that we don't just measure views and things like that. It means that if we are wrapping our stories in the strategy, we're looking at how our stories can actually support the idea of multiplying disciples and churches on the ground, just like John was saying. So that's the, uh, that's the idea we're talking about. Calvin. Thank you, Tom. That was wonderful. It's, so important to have great stories in, as we share. And that was really our heart behind having both John share, Tom share, and then some of us share. How do we deal with this face-to-face -face and cyberspace now in the world, even more so cyberspace that we're coming up with? And so we're having a strategy that we're just rolling out now. The puzzle pieces are still coming about. You can do the next, next slide. slide. And um, just talking about um, aspects of how can we reach 
all remaining unreached people? And how can we also be aware of the movement dynamics going on? Churches that are being planted to the fourth generation, movement right. leaders are, right. are challenging us. How can we come and help them even further enhance and accelerate their movements? That's right. Next slide. Yeah, and uh, I, as we were praying about this, uh, we were sensing God's encouragement about the 2020 vision and completing that. And uh, he was encouraging us that 75% of all unreached peoples um, would uh, have the gospel clearly explained to them in these indigenous films. But then God began to challenge me. Next slide. And he said to me, what about the 25? Uh, there you go. What about the 25, the remaining 25? And I began to think, okay, he is the good shepherd. He's the good shepherd that leaves the 99 and goes after the one, right? So this is his heart. He wants all unreached peoples to come to know him and have a clear explanation of the gospel in their heart language. And so I began to think about this 21, the next slide. Um, and it started giving me, again, like Carol was sharing, this whole concept of serving movements we're hearing, you know, over the years, if you've been involved in frontier missions, unreaching unreached peoples, as we have for 40-something years, um, you've seen sort of a, uh, a change of seasons, where at first we were celebrating when one or two unreached people would come to the Lord. Then a year or so later, we'd be celebrating that churches were being planted. Well, now we're seeing multiplying churches to the fourth, fifth, sixth generations, and hundreds of thousands of unreached peoples in a people group, uh, or millions even, uh, that we'll hear about later, coming to Christ. And, uh, and so what we feel like the Lord is saying is, what I want you to do is begin to, to reconnect the, the disconnect that's happened between media and movements and mission work. And uh, Grace and others will talk more about this later. And uh, the Lord, I began to speak to some of the folks that have been helping us with research, like Todd Johnson, and uh, he has given us a list. Actually, he's not releasing the list till July because they're still working on things, but he gave us a copy of it, and it gives the entire list of that remaining 25, and it is doable. It is doable, and I'm, we're so excited that God is leading us in this way. Next slide. But we, we felt like, you know, the 2020 vision was hard enough, <laughs> you know, a uh, couple hundred altogether is about two, 212 people groups. That was big enough uh, job. It seemed like a mountain, but that's just a hill compared to the 25, it seems like. And so the Lord challenged and he says, you know, you won't be able to finish this unless you begin to think different. And I go, okay, think different. What, what do you mean by think different? And yeah, we, uh, we all know about Apple and that's its uh, big logo, you know, think different. And I had just been reading the, the biography uh, of, uh, of Steve, Jobs. Steve Jobs, thank you, honey, of Steve Jobs and this whole concept. Next slide. And uh, uh, okay, and so the, the Lord began to tell me when I asked, well, what, how do I think different? And God said, well, tell me, how do you see media and missions today? How do you see your, your ministry? And uh, I began to say back to God, okay, well, I see it as media missionaries are creating films. You can keep clicking the build. Yeah. Creating films for unreached people groups, right? That's what we've always talked about, and that's the way we've always kind of perceived things. That's been our paradigm. And then I, I shared that with the Lord, and the Lord said, you need to think different. And I said, okay, well, how? And he says, you need to think this way. Unreached peoples creating films for media missionaries, for this vision that we're talking about. The believers amongst the unreached peoples of the world being equipped to create short films that can be in multiple languages, because most of them speak four or five or six different languages of unreached peoples around them, they being equipped to produce short little films and animations and things that can then be used on social media, on the internet, Bluetooth to one another, and it just would go viral. 
And we felt like the Lord was saying, this is what you're going to need to do. This is the way you're going to need to think and strategize in order to see the remaining people reach. Next slide. And so this is actually the, the whole purpose behind this new banner. You can see our banner if you've been to previous VMSFs. It, often we had us running along to the finish line. But God said, no, I'm thinking differently. You, you don't, I don't want you to simply give a place at the table for, for people who have come to me from unreached peoples. I want them to be in the kitchen. I want them to be the chefs making the food, not just coming to the table. They need to be in leadership. And so uh, th this is the reason why we put together this visual and Dave Hudson, a uh, great graphic artist, put this together. And all of the languages you see in the background there are languages, fonts of the languages of people groups that we did films for in the last 10 years. That's so exciting because um, as we've been hearing testimonies and we have, we had an unreached person come to us, one of our Indonesian film, and he said, your media sparked a movement among my people. And we said, really? Tell us about it. And then it's just snowballing. We're seeing case study after case study of how media helped a movement, helped people come to know the Lord, and then it multiplied. And so um, we're writing books and chapters and books about it, and it's a really uh, good heart uh, to have. And so we're just going to show a, a short clip that shares a little bit about what do we mean by media that sparks movements. You can show that video. Amen. And so we were at a large gathering and we met um, Grace. It was uh, movement leaders and we hadn't connected for a while, but we had worked on some projects in the Middle East with her. Grace has uh, lived in uh, the Middle East for like 25 years and is a real passionate and advocate uh, for this. So we talked and we had movement leaders say, when are you going to serve us? You media people serve us media. Uh, movement leaders and so we said oh wow so we've been talking and dialoguing and I just wanted to share have Grace share her heart for just a few minutes about how she sees media working for movements. Grace. Thank you Carol and thank you Cal. I am so honored to be with you. Don't you just love the King and don't you love being a part of the body of Christ? It's just marvelous to be together and we're so glad that you're with us. Um, you know, the King, he, he doesn't, um, you know how God speaks to us. And I just want to thank all of the brothers and sisters that are with us now because um, there's moments in history, you know, God has seasons to his activity. And um, some of us that have been around for several decades, we can, it's a joy because we can look back and we can compare um, what we saw in the past and what we see today. M my estimation is, is that God has shifted gears. And with the virus right now, um, everything with media has accelerated. Everything with online connections has accelerated to an even um, higher intensity than we even imagined two months ago or three months ago. I believe that God is inviting us to make disciples more effectively using media. And everything we've been talking about, we need to keep doing. We're going to keep doing the media to movements. But when we say media for movements, think of it as something we're adding on to what we're already doing. And it fits that bottom part of the funnel. The bottom part of the funnel where we, we, we see those movements and we see the people on the ground. Did you know that we've had a lot of teams using media that have had to pull back 
on their push of media because they don't have enough people on the ground to follow up. And so the joy of what's happening right now, and I know God is doing this. For the last three years, I've talked to people that are deep into movements where they're seeing thousands and sometimes hundreds of thousands of people that are being baptized and following Christ. And then I've talked to leaders of, of media groups and um, those of us that love media and are creative. And what both sides are saying now is, ah, oh, I want to be part of the same world. I want to be part of the, I, the, the, the people that are doing the movements. They're saying, we want to use media more effectively. We want to understand media. We want to be able to produce some of our own media. Would you show us how to do it? And then the those of us that create media, instead of us saying, like, we've produced something and here, use it, what if we were to start from the very beginning of the content and say to these disciples on the ground, how do we get some of this movement DNA mixed in with some of the content that we're producing? Um, it's a moment in time. It's an opportunity. It's an invitation that God is giving us. And so I encourage all of us to say yes to God, whatever it looks like, that we will join God in doing media for movements, where we don't just create content to serve movements, but we are a part of the movements, producing content with disciple makers on the ground. Um, be encouraged because um, I believe that God is opening up doors that no man can close. And um, I look forward to um, walking through this door with you. Thank you, Grace. Carol Calvin, do you have anything you wanted to add or you want me to keep going? You can keep going. Wow. Thanks, um, Carol Calvin, Grace. I'm inspired and I, I hope, and I know we're doing this through digital means, but you're sensing the spirit of God in this unique moment in which we find ourselves where it's been 2,000 years. The spirit of God is always at work. And now we're at this threshold of the opportunity to really